is being streamed from the studios of 2.7. And uh, as we continue the conversation, again, let's remind you that we have cash out goes with the short code star 439 hash. And please choose option two for us. Increase the number of stakes that you have because after the USD uh, dashboard uh, is seen, after you've clicked star 439 hash, you'll get the options. Choose option two. Increase the number of tickets as well. I always encourage you 5555. Five, five. At least if you do 25 stakes, there's nothing wrong. Because uh, today is a Friday, let's have some big bonanza and have some great conversations. Now, today we'll be discussing uh, some key issues right here. As you know, uh, we have uh, a number of concerns that have been raised by civil society organizations as well as individual governance institutions and those who tend to comment on the related issues about accountability. There's a judgment debt involving a company called GPCG. Uh, they had a power purchase agreement. We decided to abrogate or cancel it. Subsequently, there was a litigation in the British court, $134 million being the sum that was awarded the plaintiff, so to speak, and subsequently a reinforcement of that as well in uh, an American court, $111 million. And the concerns are that, look, at some point in time, the country needs to take the bull by the horn and then make people accountable. And so we'll be discussing that in the second hour of the conversation. But the first hour concerning Coco Board is now saying they don't, more need syndicated loans. So on that part, that's a good thing. But also the criticism has been that they are going this route because they have no option on the international credit market. They can't go and borrow or get more syndicated loans for purchasing cocoa that has been produced by farmers. On the other hand also, our concerns be raised by these farmers that Galancé seem to have uh, destroyed the cocoa farms. As a result of that, we're where we are. Let me say good morning to all of you. Uh, lawyer Apia Dankwa, good morning. Uh, good, uh, good, uh, good morning. And then also Ibrahim Maliba, Scribbly Charlie no busy. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, Maliba, I haven't seen you in a while. Yes. I've been uh, away for some time. You have been away. Yes. I was here last week yes. and uh, you were also doing some work somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. I went but, to the Western region. Yes, but put together, we we're all doing national duty. All right. Lawyer Jantua, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I, love, I love your green. Thank you. So Ro beautiful. Roland, where is the MPP? Uh, they haven't still uh, why? accepted an no, invitation no, to why? the table. M MPP, why? What is it? <laughs> eh? uh, so we need them here to discuss some of these things. Some of these I things. think that what is what is it that is they are denying themselves from this platform? Well, uh, MPP, why, uh, Mr. President? Tell your people we need them here. Yeah, certainly. What, what is the cause? Is it because of us here or what? I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, 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 your manifesto has come out, hasn't it? It has. Shouldn't you be here to be explaining your manifesto? MPP, why? The people voted for you. You have a party in power. You don't want to come and explain to the people. I don't understand. The MPP, please come. We okay. need you. Hey, but Senior, I Rola, don't think, I don't I, think people want them. Okay. I so think that. I they need to that. explain. Yeah. Irrespective. Followed, irrespective. Followed irrespective. irrespective. Irrespective, they are the ruling, uh, they are power. Them, so they should come and explain some of the things. They say. Irrespective, yeah. they have to come and discuss some of these and defend themselves. But Why? Do you believe what... what Whatever uh, it is, they should uh, come. Uh, the people don't believe... And the, and, and the people they should don't come. <laughs> All right. What are so, they running away from? Well... Uh, let's is it Roland they are running away from? Who? Is it you they are running away no, from? No, we only host two times. So, so, so why? Yeah. Okay, so um, let me say good morning to Justice Mingo. What's my boss at GBC? Good morning to you, Boss Mingo. And number of you who have joined us on the stream, please make sure you share our stream. I can see Patrick Opoku. Good morning, Patrick. Um, and then also Mensa Majid and a number of uh, individuals as well. Prince Henry, uh, John B., John Bosco. And then also famous, um, that famous pop joint on Ogle Road. Please, thank you for always uh, giving us good supplies. Robert Coleman is commissioning uh, one of the astroturfs at the McCoy College. And I'm told that the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, is at the <coughs> front, um, forefront of this. It will be on Monday. Robert Coleman, Chief Executive for the Wembley Sports Construction. And certainly, but let's look at the the cocoa sector and the issues the, uh, uh, as we have it. Mr. Anani has joined us. He's the, the 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 lead or the president of the cocoa farmers. Good morning to you. You've joined us. 
my regards to everybody. Okay, great. Now, uh, let's just tell you, for, for the 2021 uh, crop season, we had um, uh, 683,000 by way of um, the, the sum of the yield, so to speak, what we're able to purchase from our production in Ghana. And it just, um, well, indicated the downward spiral of the yields. So that was a 32% reduction over the previous years. Then this year, well, from what we're getting, we only get 580,000 approximate tons right. of cocoa. Mm -hmm. oh, so, okay. so, so that's right. And then, well, look, we, we ideally will be getting a number of um, sums being recorded by, by what we tend to achieve and be getting a lot of profits. The concern is that they say we're not managing our issues. Well. So these are the losses we've been posting. Cocoa Board has been posting the losses. So we have 350 million. Now we are in excess of billion. So since 2021, it's been 2.4 billion, 3.2 billion, 2023, 4.2 billion. So the losses are massive. That should be a concern for everybody. This is because since Gorgisbeck's time, Cocoa has been an integral part of our foreign exchange earnings. Sure, not only, only shoring up the city to improve the, its volatility and how it can withstand the shocks, but this is where we are. Now, we say that we're going locally to source funding to purchase our beans. Can we do that? Is it possible? Ms. Anani, good morning to you. Good morning. You lead the cocoa farmers, and um, if you take a look at the sector, how would you describe it in your own words, in terms of what is happening at the farms, how the farmers are doing, and what is um, being the challenge and a hindrance to our production? Uh, anyway, good morning to the listeners. Uh, in fact, uh, the decline of cocoa production in the country now has become a serious factor or a serious problem for the nation. Uh, especially we cocoa farmers, because uh, it's our main work that we depend on. And uh, the way cocoa is declining in production in Ghana has been a big problem for us. We have had a series of uh, uh, discussions about the situation. But we come to realize that uh, it has so many factors, and uh, some of the factors, as we know, uh, the, the major one is the, the, the farmers' the inability to act on our own to see and react to the situations and the challenges that we go through. Meaning that uh, uh, when there is any attack or you know uh, destruction of our farms and those things, we have no power or anywhere to you know. Uh, seek for assistance or help from, and uh, besides, uh, you know the grains of the cocoa, uh, I mean, uh, gold, galamsey, uh, uh, and those things. It has also caused a lot of problems to the nation's cocoa farming activities. Okay. In that uh, we have cut a lot of cocoa out of the system. And cocoa farmers, as you always apportion the blame on us. Mm. It's, never, it's never like that because the chiefs have a power on the cocoa land. And then we are the people, you know, farming on the land. So when the, the chief sells his uh, uh, land to anybody, we have a less, I mean, a very least power to. Say something, and at the end of the day, the cocoa will be uh, uh, destroyed. And not only that, a lot of factors, you know, smuggling and then the payment, when it comes to how much they pay to us, it doesn't encourage we, the farmers, to do the, uh, a lot or put in a lot to, you know, uh, maximize the production. Okay. So now, cocoa industry is becoming down and down. And as we all been hearing from cocoa balls, swelling shoes, and all that, I mean, some of the chemicals they recommend for mm. us to do, we mm. don't know. When we say this, people think it's a political or something. We, we are not political. We are also protecting our interests on, 
uh, with regards to the uh, business for running and cocoa, not only cocoa, uh, agriculture in Africa, especially Ghana, is not treated as a business. So uh, our interest there and the country's uh, leaders' interest in the agriculture is just a significant, okay. very small. Mr. Mr. So Mr. you don't put in much. Mr. 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 Yes, sir. We have Cocoa Board, and Cocoa Board is supposed to be um, helping you to um, produce effectively so the yields then will go up. If you say Galamse is a problem, like we find on the field, who is a perpetrator? Is it that because illegal mining is more profitable, that is why you people are giving your lands away, or rather, the Alodia owners of these um, lands? are the ones doing that? Uh, as I told you just now, I said we cocoa farmers, they always are pushing the blame, the, uh, I mean, the Galante operation of blame on us. It's never ever like that at all. Because, you know, farmers, we have no talk. We don't have anybody who comes to our aid or assist us in any situation. Stop. Come and see on my table when you come to Nakufa office. We have a lot of complaints there. Sometimes it's difficult for us to complain. And when we are complaining, mm. we don't know who to complain to. We okay. normally report to police stations and other places. But nobody will come to our aid. And at the end of the day, the case becomes uh, just a foolish case. So, for instance, if they are forcing the blame, this is our, our worry, major worry. They okay. always are forcing the blame on us. But, but you are not to be blamed. It's never ever like that. The lands are for the chiefs and the leaders. The leaders are, uh, have employed or recruited uh, those Galamse operators. They are the back of it. And then the chiefs are the owner of the land. So sometimes when they come, very difficult for us to say something. Sometimes you, you insist that you won't allow them. But they will go around and, you know, as, uh, do the Adelante around your farm. That's before you realize the farm is going, is uh, 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 destroyed. Okay. Mr. Mr. Anani Boatin, thank you very much. As the president of the Ghana National Cocoa Farmers Association. And just um, trying to tell us where we are currently. And um, Mr. Pia Dankwa, doesn't look good, does it? Now, Cocoa Board, on one hand, is saying that, well, syndicate alone, because we want... We want to come local, and so that's why we're having the policy direction now. But the critics also say that, I mean, if you go on the international market, there's no money for you. You are discredited. But that's a, that's a good policy, coming local. Yeah, so let me take this opportunity to wish your lovely viewers a good morning, and my seniors here a good morning. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, um, hopefully we can have a very good discussion concerning an issue that goes to the very soul of this country. Mm. Because for a very long time, uh, the Ghana economy has been, uh, let's say, a cocoa-driven driven, driven, driven economy. Uh, ordinarily, uh, any issue that concerns uh, trying to find financing locally to purchase cocoa would have been one that I personally would have supported. Mm -hmm. Because I think it is pretty clear that one of the cardinal uh, uh, policy prescriptions in our great transformational plan uh, to deal with strengthening the macroeconomic uh, situation in this country is to depart from uh, our, our generational old uh, plan or policy of always seeking for syndicated loan, dollar denominated syndicated loans outside. To come and purchase cocoa in 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 Ghana, because that's one of our policy uh, 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 prescriptions. Because really, it doesn't make sense. You are purchasing cocoa in CD. Why do you always have to go for a dollar-denominated loan to come and purchase cocoa in, uh, uh, in CDs? And so, always, what that does to us that it, it, it takes a lot away from our ability to benefit wholly from the sale on the sale of cocoa uh, outside but in this case 
the reasons why government is attempting to suddenly uh, look inwards is not because of any uh, policy consideration. The fact of the matter is that they've attempted to raise money outside and they have failed. That's a fact. Uh, so the, the, uh, uh, the fact is, uh, they've attempted the, 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 the age old syndication outside and they have not been entirely successful. Last year, how much were they able to raise? Uh, last year, last year, I think they were able to raise in the region of 600 million USD. Uh, this year, uh, from the from the Kuku boss CEO's own own words, he's saying that uh, what's called uh, they, they have been given some what's called uh, terms of reference, which essentially su suggests that some form of negotiations are ongoing. And the only reason why they suddenly want to look in was is because they are it, it, it's not to be as in, it's not too successful. So I think as in they, uh, they ought to come clear with us. As in they ought to be transparent with the people of Ghana and, and, and concede that, listen, we are in a financial crisis. Uh, as in, and, 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 and our way of dealing with, with the crisis is to look inward. But there's a larger need for serious reforms in the cocoa sector. Uh, probably these issues, the financial issues, we are we are we are facing have brought them to the fore. So one has to do with like I'm saying, for me it doesn't make sense why we we'll always go outside to go and take a dollar denominated facility to purchase cocoa locally. The second issue that I think has to be looked at is is it not the right time for us to be having a conversation about the liberalization of the cocoa sector? When I say liberalization of the cocoa sector, is it not the right time for us to find a way of allowing private sector to purchase cocoa? In this country because cocoa has a history in this country and for me when you, you talk about cocoa unfortunately it, it's not just an economic question it's also a political question because cocoa but, has always but, but we, are, we already have license cocoa buyers they buy for government nobody no local company can, can buy they, they all buy government is the ultimate buyer of uh, what's called a uh, uh, cocoa in the country i think the kind of life has to have a conversation about liberalizing the cocoa sector because you see history tells us that before uh, the 50s let's say the mid 50s when cadbury used to buy cocoa the cocoa farmers uh, were doing very well i mean when you go to i always use Kumasi as an example when you go to ashton you see the story buildings in ashton you go to Edom, you go to yeah, Asafo, well, proceeds of yeah they were they were they were they were, they were built by monies that cocoa farmers and yeah, 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 you understand. But like I'm saying, in Ghana, cocoa has not only been treated as an economic question. Cocoa has also been treated as a political question. So for me, the time is right for us to have a conversation on the liberalization. And the last bit is, why is it? As in, what kind of justification can we have for the 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 bank statement of cocoa board not being part of Ghana government's uh, 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 accounts? Are you aware that Cocoa Boss account is not part of government of Ghana's account? Are, are you aware? That when you take Ghana's account, Cocoa Boss own is separate. So I think that for me, and also the Galamse issue, so for me this issue grants us an opportunity to have a deeper conversation about the, the, the Cocoa mm. uh, situation and how Ghana can maximize gains in that sector, because are you not concerned that for a country that is the second biggest producer of cocoa every year, as in our, our, our cocoa economy is about two billion, what is our role in the in, in the bigger global cocoa business? And when, when, when I say the bigger global cocoa business, uh, chocolate, cocoa drinks, and all. So the value in, chain. As, 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 okay. So for me, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for us to have a bigger conversation to create a system where we can maximize gains in the cocoa uh, sector. Uh, Mr. Maliba, the farmers are crying. Uh, <coughs> we, we didn't go to the extent of saying that we wanted to clamp down Galamse. Now, the yields have been affected. The lands are being taken away. Let me just introduce um, the uh, professor of finance and, econom and economics uh, at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Bokpin. Good morning to you, Professor Bokpin. 
Yes, good morning. Yeah. Good morning to our panelists and our listeners and viewers. I okay. hope you are doing well. Okay, we're doing well. Mr. Maliba, that question to you. Let's quickly wrap it up. You didn't ask the question. You so, so the question is, it and, uh, okay, so <laughs> if, 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 we take, if we take a look at the effect of Galamsey, etc., um, who would you then apportion this blame to? That the ineffectiveness of the states is resulting in some of these low yields that Cocoa Bud is recording, or that is just a phenomenon mm -hmm. of what the natural occurrences are. And so we should go with Cocoa Bud's own narrative. So you've now asked the question. So let me say good morning to your viewers. Growing up in the secondary school, those days, the, the dense secondary school, <laughs> the most often asked question by economics teachers is this. Cocoa is the backbone of Ghana's economy. You mean the old system? The old system. Anybody who did economics in my time and his time, I don't know your time, whether your time. This question, and ask uh, Professor Bobkin. I think he's also an SS man. Professor. But he will know. Okay. <laughs> that Ghana, uh, cocoa is the backbone of Ghana's economy, which meant that cocoa is Ghana, Ghana is and Ghana is cocoa. Today, can you and me sit here and say the same thing? The answer is no, because you've displayed on your board the losses that the cocoa industry is recording. Now, I'll dovetail into your question and answer it. Mm. What is the cause of this? Yes, we agree. The weather also has its implications or its impact. Up north, we saw some uh, drought. And after that, uh, you saw some um, pouring of water from the Bagre Dam. So the weather has its effect. But as managers of the cocoa industry, have we managed this crop to the glory of God? Not even to the people of this country, but to the glory of God. Because God gave us that product. God gave us that tree. The answer is no. You heard the cocoa farmer. I am told that there's a facility that the, the, that the uh, Ghana Cocoa Board can draw, draw down on. Which facility is used to maintain the cocoa industry? They have not been able to draw down on that facility because they simply like ideas as to how to put in measures for them to qualify to draw down on that, that, that facility. So this is not about the weather. This is purely about lack of capacity on the, on the part of those who are manning our cocoa industry. Is it therefore surprise or surprising for you to hear that cocoa farmers are cutting down the trees and engaging in Galamse or handing over those lands to Galamseyers? I was here with you on your program. We saw a cocoa farmer mm, lamenting who boldly said that the amount of money he received just last week <laughs> from the Egalamsea for using his land is more than the 30 years that he has been in the cocoa industry. That's true. So, as a rational human being, let's put because patriotism doesn't give food, my brother. Patriotism doesn't give food. As a rational human being, what would he do or would you do if you are in such a situation? Because you have family. As I speak, do you know that the produce buying company, PBC, which is one of the licensed buying companies for the cocoa board, is collapsed? PBC, the headquarters is just here. I was a board member in that company. And that company did extremely well. In your time? In my time. That company was number two or three in buying cocoa. Among produced buying companies? I am produced buying companies. Today, that company has collapsed. To the extent that they are selling their properties of that company. The accounts have been even garnished for defaults, etc. And so, you don't know whether this government, whenever they touch their hands on something, it destroys. Do you know that... 
the 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 company that was um, put together by President John Mahama for share nut at the Bupe share share there's a Bupe share nut factory. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. That company too has collapsed under this administration. So it is one simple answer to your question. The managers of the cocoa industry have failed. And for close to seven years, this is a company that is supposed to be making profit. This is a company that, because of the nature of Ghana's cocoa, you know, our cocoa is termed as premium. It is sought after all over the world. So if you have a premium product and you are recording losses, my brother, what is it? It's not about poor management of the sector. And so I think that uh, on, on, on between the minority and cocoa board. the cocoa board, I will lean towards the minority because the cocoa, the, the cocoa board under this government, and not just cocoa board alone, this government specializes in lies and deception to rule. And so we have seen instances where they say they will, not, they will not be haircuts and they are haircuts. You, you have seen situations where they say that they will not pump money into national cathedral, public funds into national cathedral, and they have pumped money into it. So I think the defense from Cocoa Board is just a face-saving mechanism. But I think that there's more to the problem than what uh, than meets the eye. Um, if, you, if you take a, a recourse to the Cocoa Board statement, is it the minorities, um, well, um, statement that the laws are in excess of some 4.2 billion are not true and that they posted 2.3 billion by way of their profits for the 2023 financial year uh, and also it means that cocoa board is the right entity to be given us the, these sort of um messages on the ground even though the farmers are saying something different and then also the key stakeholders what do you make of it good morning morning good morning to our viewers morning sometimes I asked God why he didn't give us the power to see into the future well, and even to see when people pass away and move on. Why do you say that? Tata question or for Dr. Kwame Kuma will be crying for this country today. We'll be crying for Ghana today. Look, the three most important commodities that hold our economy cocoa, gold, and oil, have we added value? Have we been able to add value? When you add value, you make more money. In the 90s, I used to import, export cocoa liquor eh, from cocoa processing in Tema. It made more money than the beans. When you said the liquor is the cake. The, no, the, the, the liquid, the, 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 the coverture, yes. which they used to do chocolates. And you know why? Because you stop, you stop and you help the processes of chocolate out there to now turn the cocoa beans into the liquid. So that process, you save the money. So it attracts more, apart from the premium on our cocoa gold have we been able to add value oil have we been able to add value so you ask the question who is thinking are you saying nobody's the thinking? handlers of this country should progress when dr kwame nkrumah got independence for our country the founder of this country got independence for this country what did he start doing he started building factories. We even had a nail, 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 a, a nail factory in this country. Nail factory. He realized what it took, where energy was. He brought an atomic reactor, 1965. He was thinking. Who is thinking? Why do you think we go for syndicated loans? Tell me, why do you think? Because it helps show up the city. You go for syndicated loan and you're buying cocoa in cities. It helps shore up the city because we are lazy um, uh, 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 managers of our own currency. Lazy. 
How can how can I put it? In a, well, how in what way can I put it? You mean you don't have to be diplomatic about I, it? What, it's not a question of being diplomatic. Look, look, and I'll say this again. Any commodity produce you 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 grow in Ghana has a premium. And I'll give you a simple one like pineapples. Me, I've exported pineapples before. I bought pineapples around the world into the UK before, so I know. When Ghanaian pineapples get into Europe, it has a premium. It has a premium. And just next door, Côte d'Ivoire, is the second largest producer of pineapples. We in Ghana, ours is better than theirs. What have we done? So our leaders, what are they thinking? That you go for syndicated loan to buy, what do you call it? Cocoa beans in cities. Is that, what, is, is that, is that how you run your economy? And then you don't even pay the farmers adequate uh, salaries. Premiums. Premiums. How? How? And then those, what are they called? The people who go and negotiate to buy the, to buy the cuckoo. They, they have a name. Those people that cuckoo Cocoa bought. Budget. No. Yeah. The mar marketing no. officers. Yeah, some, they have a, a the middleman. The purchasing officers. They would make sure that they pay you next to nothing. I, mean, I have a cocoa farm. Through my father. And when those people come, they'll negotiate with you out of the bottom. So I think the most important thing is to look at how we reorganize Cocoa Board. Because what? A government gets its finances. Look, a finance minister can tell you that the Cocoa, uh, what do you call it, uh, syndicated loan is coming to show up the city. Are you, are you working as a finance minister? Are you working? You are looking at loan to show up your currency. To show up your currency. Are you working? It, it is sad. You see, you that are, it is are sad. agitated today. I am, I am uh, Roland, I've been talking since 2004. I'm getting to a point where I'm getting tired. That the same old thing. Nobody seems to want to get this country back on its feet. Apart from the fact that we have all the natural resources. We have all the human power. We have all... All, if we handle our, our finances well, at the present moment, like the city will be rising. It will be rising. Where's the, you where's think the city? It, it can happen? Where's the, why not? If we manage it well, why not? We can do it. Look, 395 million 2017 to 4.2 billion 2023 losses. How? You grow cocoa. How, 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 can, you, how can you accept losses? It's up to the president to call Cocoa Board. And see them and talk sense into their head. Well, Kukubo say it is 2.3 billion profits. Whatever. To, can they prove it? It's in their... No, can they prove it? it? When, when, it when, 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 when the CEO of Cocoa Board was being interviewed, did he show the, 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 the figures there? Did he? How? Look, look. I, 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 it, it, it baffles my imagination where Ghana stands today. It baffles my imagination. Professor Buckwin, um, these things, uh, going for syndicated and not going for it, if you take a look at the face value of it, um, nationalism, patriotism, I mean, we should be happy, is that not it? The farmers are telling us another thing. The, the grounds are not good. The farms are being dissipated daily. That's why they are recording low yields. Galamse is eating into the vegetative cover. And we're told that everything is going to be fine by Cocoa Board. They said they posted um, profits. The minority says, you posted losses. Say the truth. Where are we currently? And what does it portend for us? For the economy, the currency, and even the farmers themselves? All right, thank you. Good morning, and good morning to everyone. Um, well, I want to start off this way. Um, I'm wondering why we woke up in 2024 and it looks as though we are surprised. Um, why? Please, right. can you tell me any single institution in this country that we have managed sustainably? That's a success story that you can point to. Can you tell me? In a state institution where Ghanaians are in charge that we can use as an example. We have none. Even the central bank. Free, free SHS. Oh, come on. <laughs> Even the central bank, the bank of last resort. You see why MPP won't come. 
we, 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 we have messed it up. Okay. The, the nation's central bank, the bank of last resort. Worst case scenario, that's where you will tend to. The central bank needs a bailout. So I, I'm, I'm not surprised. I would rather be surprised that Ghanaians are concerned 2024, as though this thing just happened overnight. The time that we are <coughs> incapable of managing for the common good. That's all. It's greed. It's corruption. Yeah. That fails to see the future because we are busy stealing today so we have we don't even care about what will happen tomorrow. Okay, we should be sad because we have merely gone to school. We have not studied. That's what we have done to ourselves. Okay, so on a on a on a certain breath, you can say that um syndicating the the the, the Kukulu locally. Um would have been ideal for the economy, right? And we had said this in the time past, that instead of exporting the margins, the interest, to the international financial community, you could syndicate this locally, use it to build the domestic financial markets, offer alternatives to, 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 to investors, which can also boost savings mobilization because the instrument to be out there, you invest in them six months, eight months time. These are going to be short term. Mm -hmm. And then and then you liquidate the instrument once you sell the cocoa from the international capital market. Okay, you can look at Côte d'Ivoire, the model also, right? And but we've we've done this before, right? Bank of Ghana used to issue cocoa bill to purchase cocoa. Of course, with the volumes and also the high interest costs, but you should also remember what is it that the average Ghanaian is interested in. When we have been elected and we occupy positions, it's not to use it for the common good, and it's not to manage with tomorrow in mind. It's more about my selfish interest, which clouds our judgment about decisions that we are making today oblivious of what it could, it could force us tomorrow. That's all that we have been doing. Okay, so, and, it's, it's, and if Pokobot says that they've made profit, oh, really? Because your debts have been restructured. Okay, so this is not like a normal profit you want to celebrate and all of that. Let's, let's look, Cocobot that we are talking about, Cocoa board used to borrow from the international capital market at a rate lower than Ghana government itself. Cocoa board. You can check the records. Cocoa board. There's credibility deficit. Okay. Cocoa board can't be trusted. In fact, in the last four years, Cocoa board can't be trusted, couldn't be trusted by the international financial community simply because. Cocobot couldn't deliver on its own word. Which is what? under surprise. We have arrears mm. that we are rolling over. So even though cocoa price has gone up in the world market, we are not benefiting mm. optimally from it because we have to use current production, a substantial well, portion of that, to, 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 to clear arrears brought forward. Where is the credibility? Mm. Okay. For the international financial community, some of these fund managers put together at a global level, they are sitting on over $100 trillion. So if you look at how much we syndicate annually, $1.5 billion. In fact, last year it was, it was far less than $1 billion. How much is that? It's not, a, it's not an issue to the international financial community at all. So the problem is not that there's a funding squeeze, from, uh, from the international financial community, it has more to do with our own weakening fundamentals. Let me put it this way. Increasingly, Ghana is living less and less sustainably. Increasingly, we are living less and less sustainably because of greed, because of corruption, right? We, we are unable to put in place a long-term plan that we follow through. 
Mm. We are unable to do that. Because the reason why we are occupying so, those positions is not to manage with the common good in mind. It's not to manage with tomorrow in mind. In fact, sometimes we live our, our lives as though well. today is all that matters. Forget about tomorrow. Okay. All right. No, that, that, that's the reality. And then you want to look, why are we talking about these things now? We have been highlighting Galamse for some time now. The average farmer today is, comf as you, has been said on your show, is comfortable to trade off his farmland for, 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 for Galamse proceeds today. Okay, because that, that is how we are all living our lives now. Our chiefs, the custodian of our life, land and our water resources today have all given up and bought into Galamse and openly defend, defending it. Our president, who put his presidency on the line oh. to deal with Galamse, that statement rather became an enabler. From state institutions, from the armed forces, security agencies, from police to, to chiefs to religious leaders, tell me who is concerned about tomorrow. As we speak right now, in the next 10 years to 15 years, Ghana will have to consider importing water. You should be concerned. We should, we should feel sorry for ourselves. It doesn't matter our level of education. We have merely gone to school. We have not studied to transform our society and manage our environment, which God gave us. Way back in the book of Genesis, he says, subdue, take care of the earth, do this, do this, do that. We are doing exactly the opposite, even though we are created in the image okay. and in the likeness of all right, Professor Bopi has gone kind of for your test. We mentally mentioned Genesis, I knew that. Uh, but it, it's more become an emotional issue, right? But the reality, too, is that uh, from what all of us right here agree, that there has to be some level of preference and order by which we manage the sector. Going or looking at where sector, we're going currently. What sector. what are the key concerns you think need to be addressed? Yeah, so clearly, yeah, just in three minutes, so that we'll, we'll, I want to yeah, touch on the judgment debt issue. Quickly. One, you know, as in, we are where we are because of a fundamental deficiency in leadership, and I think uh, I stand off us with what the prof said. It is a fundamental deficiency in leadership. For me, we have an opportunity again. The people of Ghana, 7 December. We need to understand that the exercise of picking our leaders is not a joke, it's a serious business. You understand? And we need to be asking the right questions. Interestingly, when you go into Alan Chamantin's great transformational plan, and, and the plan has been in place more than a year now, it, 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 it addresses almost all the issues in the cocoa sector. One, so as in with the permission, I'll just read a few. Mm. So you go to point one point one point nine reforms in cocoa sector financing. He says that. That we, we, we said, he says that we, we, we have to abolish the existing cocoa external loan syndication arrangements for the purchase of cocoa and issue domestic securities denominated in local currency for cocoa purchases. Two, now let's talk about liberalization. He says that we should deepen private sector participation in the cocoa sector by the offloading part of the shares of cocoa board on the Ghana Stock Exchange and other external exchanges, as well as introducing a share option scheme for cocoa farmers. Then we conduct a comprehensive review of the cocoa sector with a view to introducing structural reforms in the organization and management of the sector. And then we need to consolidate the balance sheet of cocoa board as part of governance of government's balance sheet. Like the prof right uh, 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 said, you see, when you're a leader or when we give you power, uh, uh, your sole job is to take decisions with the best interest of the country at heart. Uh, you understand? And you, 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 you take the decisions that have impact, not just for today, but also tomorrow. We run, uh, what's called, this country uh, uh, like an autopilot. No plan, no commitment, no long-term strategy, no medium-term strategy. Our sole focus is what is in it for me. Everything is politics, everything is partisanship, but no long-term plan, no desire to create the structures that would build for all of us the best chance of, 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 of fulfilling our individual goals. So for me, 
I think we, the people of Ghana, we are going to take a decision in December. We need to ask the right question. I'm saying that in the Great Transformation Plan, we've, 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 we've prescribed solutions that will deal with all the issues in the cocoa sector. And the people of Ghana on the 7th of December should ensure that they vote for Alan John Kudu Chamantin for that leadership that will create a better Ghana for all of us. Uh, what do you think are the inherent issues that quickly need to be addressed in the short to medium term? I mean, regarding this, because um, the every, there's every indication that we tried to get in a syndicated loan, 1.5 by March, April, it didn't work. You see, there's a saying that ears that do not listen to advice accompany the head when it is chopped off. Ears that do not listen to advice accompany the head when it is chopped off. So the managers of this economy, they should be aware that <coughs> when government changes, they will be called upon to account for their stewardship. Because your father cannot give you a profit-making organization, and he was talking about Nkrumah, and you, having taken the reins of government, would rather dissipate the resources. I don't think that there's any solution at this 11th hour. Four months to elections, and you're asking me for solutions. There is no solution to this matter. Why not? The people, the operatives, the appointees of this government have one sole aim, which is their stomach. It is not for the benefit of the people that they are ruling us. So, four months to elections, you don't ask for solutions. Four months to elections, you begin to call for accountability. And that's why I'm saying that they should be aware that the plethora of advice that professors give them, that panelists here give them, and they refuse to adhere to, the saying is that ears that do not listen to advice huh, accompany the head when it is chopped off. That's my landing statement. Mm. And as you learn, then you begin on the traffic guru, the TPG, <laughs> please. Three to four minutes, just um, medium, short to medium term. What should we be addressing quickly on this? The president says I put my presidency. That's for Galamsey. For Galamsey. Say so you put my presidency on the line. What did he mean by that? Has he been able to explain to us what he meant by that? Galamsey is affecting Coco. Coco is a breadbasket for this country. Does he not see? Does he not see? Is he not president? Is he president for only the MPP? That's why the MPP should be here. Talking about this, they should be here, that's sitting why, here. That's why they shouldn't be here. That is why they should be here. Nobody because they are in power. <laughs> Galamse is affecting our cocoa uh, farmers. And you heard the, the farmer, what he was talking about. Mm. There's nobody to go to to complain to. Then you get Kenoforiata. Instead of thinking of how you can get local banks to syndicate to support the cocoa industry, what is he doing? He's closing down banks because of personal interest. And now he's walking around free. And nobody, nobody is calling him to challenge him for the things he's done to this country. And we sit and the we banks, clap for them. The bank's closure, that supervision was done by the Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana, from where? It just started like that. It's a policy for there was the nothing from, for the finance ministry. Is that what you're saying? Nothing whatsoever. What are we talking about here? Where is he today? He should be sitting on these programs explaining why he did certain things he did. But no, the president is cushioned him. He's giving him a, a lovely portfolio. He's now working elsewhere whilst we in Ghana suffer. What kind of human beings are we? Look, our local banks cannot even put syndication together to support our cocoa industry. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Useless, Anna. Is that what we, we, are, we, are, we are trying to say? And if, and sometimes I say, it's a good thing President Nanado has come. It's a good thing. 
Because if he didn't come, Ghana would have said, ah, and the Antoine Ma, a President Kufuado, President Kufuado Baya, and Kaisa, I say, haven't we seen his mamu? Isn't everybody? When you started today's show, what did you? Ask? What was the question you asked? Where in Ghana would you say it's easy to live? What were the the the, the people saying? Some the person even said Nima next to the president's house because that's where the money is. We have a situa a situation in this country where money, 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 personal interest, personal, interest, and it has it is worse in this government. Worse in this government, and they can't be bothered whatsoever. Can't be bothered. Ghanaians, you go. Because you see, and I'll keep saying it, they feel Kwame Nkrumah snatched Ghana from them. And now they have come. And they've come for their possession. We are subjects. So they'll do anything they want with us. Let's see. Please, Ghanaians, this election you are going into, put your head and let your neck, let your head sit on your neck and make the right decisions in your voting. Uh, Professor Bokping, how do we deal with this issue of the judgment debt from Trafigura, uh, because there's a, there's a U.S. court that all, has also reinforced this, an earlier ruling also from a British court of $134 million, just because we cancelled a take-or-pay contract in the energy sector. Uh, um, well, I am not sufficiently well-versed in this particular area. So um, I wouldn't want to say much. Um, it's not really my area. So this morning, my concentration has been more on the cocoa sector. Mm. And not, uh, okay. except, to, except to say that uh, judgment debts are becoming one too many in this country. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Um, of course, I can understand the economic impact of those losses and all of that the reasons and the legality and all of that i'll leave that to the lawyers to discuss okay but one thing i'll just say is 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 that we should just know that it's not in anybody's interest if few people make gains to the detriment of the majority All we right. should be creating a just and equal society All that's right. what that i'll say on this thank uh, you uh, uh, on the coco uh, the short to medium term how how do we tackle the inherent problems in the industry so that the farmers also will have their appetite wet to continue farming instead of giving out well, their lands for galamsey yeah. purposes? We need a reset, a broad base, because what you see happening in the cocoa sector is not happening in isolation. Okay. You see the entire agriculture value chain, agribusiness. Roland, look at Ghana's food inflation. Probably one of the highest in Africa. You know why? Because the farmlands, cocoa farmlands, has ex positive externality. So the lack of attention, proper planning, accompanied with effective sustained implementation is what you see up manifesting across the board. Uh, in 2022, within eight months, Ghana's food inflation rose by more than 122%. It, it tells you the lack of attention we have paid to the agriculture sector, mm. cocoa farmland, crops. So Galamse is not only affecting cocoa farmland, crops, stable crops, all of them. We've had interventions, interventions, Planting for food and job, jobs. Where is the food? Where are the jobs? If you look at the various interventions in the cocoa sector, cocoa roads and all of that, the inefficiency, the corruption, all of that. So I think the problem hasn't been lack of resources. We have invested quite a lot that if we were efficient mm. and prudent, the outcome should be of much quality and the quantity should be much more than we are seeing. So I think that we need a reset. Um, I have I've been looking at the manifestos of the political parties, and, and, and it's not so disappointing, and it's typical of the average Ghanaian politician. We are more efficient in opposition. In opposition, we identify with the common people. In power, the disparity is wide. Okay? Mm. 
But I think that the citizens must equally be more assertive and demand reforms mm. that can, can deliver sustainable results. I think that is how we need, we need to look at it from. Uh, if you remember, during President Kufuor's time, 2004-2005, there was an intervention in the cocoa sector yeah. that uh, gave birth uh, a couple of years later, even under a different administration mm. and all of that. So I think we need to, we need to take a comprehensive look okay. and restructure cocoa board and, and to a large extent liberalize the sector. A bit. Okay, okay. And the reason we need to do this is that we need to do so and across broader governance because you see the farmer, nobody believes in the future of this country anymore. That's why the average farmer is comfortable to sell his farmland for, for grams and proceeds today because he can't look to leadership and say, look, there is tomorrow mm. because that is not what leaders themselves are doing. Okay. Everybody is selling the country. So if he sells a farmland, what sin has he committed? All right. Thank you very much. Professor Bokpin, we've enjoyed your conversation this morning and we wish you all the best for the day. Now, judgment debts. Um, uh, th there's a statistics that Ken Oferiata put out. I'm sure Mr. Jantua will try to enlighten us further on it. By 2019, up to the last year, we were paying huge sums of, of, of it as well. Of course, the blame game is that all administrations in the Fourth Republic are complicit in this. How do we deal with the latest? Is this um, Trafigura or the GPCG one? You see, it, it, it's just a, a, a symptom of, that's my personal view, that this country is on autopilot. People we put as in, in positions to work simply don't work. Or where they work, their consideration is in Ghana, their consideration is their parties. Because this issue, as in uh, the Trafigura one, 2015, we enter into a contract. The contract was entered by who? By either Ghana or an agency of Ghana. Uh, it shouldn't, for me, it shouldn't matter whether it was MPP in power or NDC in, in, in. So we uh, we entered a, a contract. It, by into, government of Ghana. By, 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 by government of Ghana. This is not by MPP or NDC. Or. Now, when this government came, they thought that they needed to review the contract. So uh, I think within the, the first quarter or the first three, four months of their being power, a review was made. The review strangely thought that the, the, the state will, will, it will be better served by paying 18 million USD to abrogate the contract as against paying about 24 point something million dollar a year as per the terms of the con uh, contract. Strangely, even though that report came, the, the state didn't take any step to, to engage uh, GCPG. Understand that the Attorney General also wrote uh, what's called an advice strangely in 2018, also advising that we could abrogate the the, uh, the contract. Now, so for me, you see, what kind of thinking, what, what kind of reason, what kind of technical skill went into those two arrangements? And was their focus Ghana or was their focus their party or to, to go after the NDC? who were in power or under whose regime those contracts were, were, were entered. And also, having lost the, uh, what's called the arbitration, and all of us, know, I'm, I'm glad my seniors are here, that where there's an arbitral award, you have very limited you know, grounds to set aside the, uh, the, uh, the arbitration. Having dilly dallied and all, and having, uh, as in, uh, 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 got into a stage where we had no choice but to pay. Yeah, you understand? What strategy? At, uh, uh, were they following in the lane? Because you see, there was a contract, uh, what's called arbitration, arbitral award of 138 million USD. I think Ghana, you know, has paid, have made payments in the range of about 80 million. And yet, when you add the interest accumulation, or we still have about 111 million USD to pay. Yeah, 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 you understand? So, what was their focus? What was their motivation? You know what I'm saying? That it is another symptom of. A clear lack of desire in this country by politicians when they have been given power to lead. Our focus is just on the power, but our focus is not to lead. And also, we do not think about Ghana. We only think about our political parties and ourselves. And I think that needs to change, and that will change when we 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 we, 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 we vote as the next president of this, of this country. Mr. Maliba, and here we are crying over accruals and also uh, an enforcement of this 
judgment coming from the U.S. court. And the concern is the state coffers is being plunged, but at the end of the day, there are legalities also to take a look at. How do we critically analyze this? These are the effects of a family and friends government. <clears throat> Why was the agreement abrogated? I'm told it was between dispute between family members in the government. Because that's hearsay. It's not hearsay because the facts support this particular position. They talked about um, capacity charges. Yet, this Trafigura agreement had the lowest capacity charge, one of the lowest. They said we had excess capacity. We don't have excess capacity, you know it. Because as we speak now, and me and you sitting here, the MPP is signing agreements. If we had excess capacity, why would they be signing agreements today? So, this family and friends things has brought us to where we are. But I am disappointed in the Attorney General. He should, he should take advice from me. I'm older than him. He may be my senior, but I'm older than him. You don't throw your boss under the bus. What do you mean by that? In all spheres of life, you don't throw, particularly when you are part of the team, when your boss did not exclude you, that you were part of it. When they asked, eh, I wasn't Attorney General by that time. What is this? Who was his boss then? <laughs> Gloria Kufu. You don't do that. Hasn't he got a, 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 a political godfathers who would teach him what happens in politics? Kofi Annan was undersecretary for the UN. Rwanda happened. And the Butu Butu Gali. When the war ended and Kofi Annan went to visit Rwanda, they approached him with, you people did not help us. He didn't say that, oh, but I wasn't the UN <laughs> Secretary General. <laughs> Kofi Annan apologized. It's the office. It's the office. It's the office. Godfrey Dami is a young boy. He should hear from me. There's good advice for him. Because the things that has happened under this Trafigura, if it were in a decent government, if we had a government that is for the people, Hess mm -hmm. would have been rolling by now. That whole Attorney General's office would have been dismantled and new people brought in. Because you had opportunity to, uh, to file your uh, processes. You didn't file. They gave you extension. I'm talking about the UK court. The extension, you lost it because you didn't live up to it. Yeah. Then you now came for another second extension. That's where the court said that this time we won't give you. So... What is, wasn't there a dereliction of duty on the part of the Attorney General's department and for that matter, Attorney General? You, 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 you asked for extension of time to file your, your defense. They gave you. You slept over it. Then you went back again and they said, this time around, the door is shut. The Attorney General thinks that it is the Ghana court. So he thinks that it's the Ghana court where he throws his weight about everywhere. You should understand this international tribunal. So I think that this whole traffic thing is poor management as usual. And I agree with the prof. Show me which sector is properly managed under this administration. You won't find it. This is an example of it. So that's how I end it. Uh, which sector? Well, I told you as a pattern to stop. Right, the MPP party is being managed. Right, right, right. If we look at key considerations that could have been made, especially a decision to abrogate a take or pay agreement, and we know that a number of comments had been made by ministers, leading members about how indiscriminately they say take or pay agreements were signed, etc. And so, in a consideration for the G. PCG contract, which has led us to where we are today, um, perhaps should we have hesitated slowly? In terms of? In terms of the policy direction that, look, as we do the review, if we think that there's a considerable fact for us to cancel, perhaps we should uh, hesitate 
before we take those <coughs> policy decisions Roland, of first, just cancelling? The first question to be asked, does the country need the facility? That's the first question. The, the facility was supposed to produce power, right? And you don't only look at power in the immediate, but you look at power in the future. So that's the first question you ask yourself. This facility that has been put up, does the country need it? Okay. So you tick the box. The country needs it. Okay. What went into putting this particular project together? So you find discrepancies. And then you look at the discrepancy and ask yourself, this discrepancy, if we take decisions that can lead the country into a situation where judgment debt might be called, will it help us? No. Yes. If it's no, then you look at the individuals and get explanation why A, B, C, D, E went on for you to understand. Look, you're dealing with international companies. And there is, internationally, people are looking at us. How did Ghana handle the Chafigura thing? We want to take investment into Ghana. Ah, they didn't handle that well. Should we take our investment in there? You think it has any That is why I'm saying people aren't thinking. People aren't thinking. The managers of this country aren't thinking. Because you think in the long term. You don't think in the short term. And obviously, when you don't have a plan eh, that will lead your country, eh, you take certain decisions just because you feel you can get your, 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 your cake on the, the government that was, was in there. Look, if it so happens... Hmm, that the MPP don't come back into power, and either the Which N will happen. Well, and either the NDC or uh, the movement Which or Cheda come into we power. Coming. We have oh, to be CPP. able or CPP. We we haven't brought our manifesto out yet, so I don't want to talk about that. We have to be able to look at things dispassionately when we find that there are things that are wrong. Deal with domestic first before you go international. Deal with domestic first because I can bet your bottom city, can bet your bottom city, if Vice President Bamia is not voted for, you will see the debt that will come out. Whatever government comes into power apart from the MPP, eh? Please, make sure you think of Ghanaians before you make certain decisions because it can have implications on us. The uh, G, 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 GPCG, the power station, is it working? What's happened to it? It's, in, it's a pong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What has happened to it? What has happened to it? MPP, were they the ones who brought Mary in? Did they bring a Mary in? No. Where's a Mary today? It's, it's Ashanti. What does that tell you? I don't understand. It shows you that whatever power infrastructure we have, we can move to other parts of the country to help us. So when you take decisions, be very mindful. When a Mary was brought in, what did the opposition say then? All over. What did they say? And now they are clapping for themselves that they brought a power project in. Mm. Were you the, 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 the people who brought Amiri in? To Ghana. Bring your own. Bring your own. Okay. We can, we, can, we can say that, if for nothing at all, they found a better way of using it. It's not sitting idle. We can give that to them. But think deeply before you take certain actions. Look, if we don't stop, and Dankwa has said it, Amale Batu has said it, if we don't stop, this personal interest thing where we want to make 10% over any project. Mm. Mm. If we don't stop it and the next government coming into power, if they don't show the balls to take people on who have involved themselves in personal interest, then I'm sorry. I, I don't see where this country will be heading for. Somebody sent me a message that President Akufuado didn't say he was putting his presidency on the line, but he was prepared 
to put his presidency ah, on the line so where Galamse is concerned. Okay, he was prepared. What has he done about Galamse? Even if he was prepared, what has he done about Galamse? All right. uh, so let me read some comments and, and thank you for making an appearance today and, and giving us these incisive contributions. This one is coming from uh, Mr. Tio Adai. He says, to become the president of a beloved country, we need personalities who exude a lot of humility and respect, respect for everyone, irrespective of where they come from in Ghana. Not people who are arrogant and disrespectful. And that should be the watchword for everyone. Well, Ola, just one thing. And then, just one thing I need to add, um, if I may. If I may, just mm, one thing I need mm. to add. Do you know we've been paying judgment deaths from 2017 to 2022? We've always paid judgment debt, even before that. Ah, but, but this is from Minister of Finance. We've been paying nearly 300 million cities judgment debt. And they come and tell us, Attorney General come to tell us, oh, Ghana, we are, we are under him, no, no judgment debt yes. has been paid. The document is here. Now, we need to be truthful. Mm. We need to be truthful. The, from uh, Landlord Borga D line, the way Ghana is going very soon, Ghana will be a place for punishment abroad. The judge will be like, I sentence you to five years in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mbappa. You people. <laughs> to become Siberia. You people, you people, you people. Um, this one is coming from Gomez. He says, are you not sure some of these agreements that they can are just done sometimes for negotiation sake and somebody is benefiting from the arbitrary award and the negotiated amounts. Hmm. And that's coming from Gomez. That's quite interesting on the other hand. Now, this one is coming from Moses, who says, let them explain the importance of take or pay in international energy contracts. It's not a negative thing at all or an animal. And these terms in the energy sector have been used to play political football here in Ghana. If we go on cancelling take or pay agreements, it is the Ghanaian who will be suffering. This one is also is coming from Abbas uh, Offenso. Uh, okay, um, I don't like your comments, so I'm not going to read. Uh, this one is um, also, uh, Oseb Wating from Kumasi says, we know that there are difficulties in the economy. I can understand why everybody is sentimental and emotional, but government is a continuum. The judgment debts that have been paid could have been from cancellation of contract or... Arbitration awards from other contracts that predated the Kufa Dulet administration. We have to be truthful for once. Roland, be truthful. All right, I've read your message. Segbefia, Kofa uh, Segbefia, my 18 hectare cocoa uh, from Kofodio with a discussion. We are happy that you've joined us this morning. But in the meantime, please make sure you always get interactive. We have um, stepped into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct. And they watch up money with Dewa Direct down <coughs> star 446 hash. Pick 1 to 39 being the range of the numbers. Win big 20 times your stake, 40 times your stake, or 400 times your stake. And especially for people like Money Need Money, please make sure that you cash in and win big every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early bets love Dewa Chop Money as well. And so at 10 a.m., there's a draw. And certainly, you get to be part of it by dialing star 446 hash. Again, choose the range of the numbers 1 to 39. Win big 20 times, 40 times, 400 times your stake. You can go online at dewa-nla.com and play. Or you can use uh, your uh, code star 446 hash as always. Roland, um, Jan to us call on the MPP to come back. Maybe good, but I think that they are replacement. They are replacement. Who is their replacement? Their replacement is the uh, movement. Huh? 
movement for change. Change. They are replacement. Are you saying they are disappointed? They are, they are, MVP? I'm not saying uh, disappointed. They are replacement. <laughs> eh? Let me finish my statement. They are replacement are better debaters than them. So but we can still have them no, also no, here. No, no, no. no. I, I, but I, I, see, in my position, like, I think everybody needs to be heard. It's yeah. essential in, in the 1992 Constitution, yeah, freedom of come. speech. Now we're taking a break. Remember, we have the latest uh, sports headlines right here for you. And then also we're going to bring you Community that Manifesto, especially when you go on to social media. I love the way you people love Community Manifesto and the insights when we post them. Well, they are views and voices of all of you in communities and constituencies. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. Do, do, do.